Wealthy and Smart, episode 291. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how to retire by age 40, and you're going to learn how much money you have to save each month to retire by age 40. Well, I often like to find articles for you that I think are very interesting, and then I like to discuss them and give you my perspective on them. And this is an article from CNBC.com. Kathleen Elkins wrote this. She's one of my favorite writers there. And I'll read you the article, and then we'll talk more about it. But I thought this was really interesting because many people do want to retire early. They're very desperate to get out of a job that makes them very unhappy, perhaps. Uh, Or maybe they just think that it's going to be a lot easier not to have to work, or they can enjoy life more. Whatever that is, you just want the financial freedom. And I get that. I actually retired early myself and got out of the rat race Uh, in my late 40s. And that was super, but you still have to have something to do. I mean, you still are going to be really bored and feel like you're not contributing to society or having anything to talk about at a cocktail party, unless you're doing something interesting. And I also like to be challenged. So it was important for me to stay in tune, stay doing something that I really love to do, and just shift from having someone else in control of that to being in charge of what I do every day, which I really love. And part of that is this podcast. So that's pretty cool. But here's what the article has to say. The typical American retires at age 62, but as everyday people have shown us, retiring before 40 is more than possible. To give you an idea of how much money you'd have to sock away to join the early retiree club, personal finance site NerdWallet created a chart showing how much you need to save each month to have a million dollars in the bank by age 40. It assumes you start with zero dollars at various ages and also assumes average annual investment returns. While $1 million is the off-sited amount needed to retire comfortably, depending on when you retire and what you want your lifestyle to look like in your golden years, you may need more or less than that. To help you figure out the right amount to fund your retirement, check out NerdWallet's Retirement Calculator. So before I go on and get to the numbers that they talk about, I just want to say I do not think $1 million is enough to retire, especially if your age 40 at some time in the future, because there's always inflation and purchasing power is going to decline. So we can't assume that a million dollars when you turn age 40 is going to purchase the same goods that it will purchase today. So if age 40 is 5, 10, 15 years away from your current age, then we need to take into account inflation and the decline in purchasing power. But also, I just don't think even today, if you were to hit age 40, I don't think a million dollars is enough. For the average number of years that people are living, you need to have a lot more than that. And I would assume a life expectancy probably to uh, somewhere in your 80s, at least to be safe. And depending on your family's life expectancy. My mother lived a very long time. So I'm I'm planning my life expectancy into the hundreds. That is the fastest growing age group is the over age 100 group, believe it or not. And so I think more of us need to start thinking about that and plan for this this I guess what you would say best case scenario instead of worst case scenario. I don't know. Is it the best case scenario to live over 100? Maybe. But it's just something that I think about and I think is important to plan for because of the longevity in my family. All right. So the article continues. 
If you're aiming for the $1 million mark, here's how much you have to save per month to reach the goal. All right, so it has a chart here, and it shows a 4% return, a 6% return, 8%, and 10%. And basically it says if you are starting out at age 20 and earn a 4% annual return, you'd need to save about $2,717 a month. At age 25, $4,050 a month, assuming a 4% annual, annual return. At 30, $6,768 a month, and at 35, $15,033 a month at a 4% average annual return. Now, this actually sounds really impossible for a lot of people. And we're going to talk about how it gets easier with these higher compounding rates. And that really is the point of why I chose this article is to get to talking about higher compounding rates. So hang with me. Things are going to get better as these percentage annual returns get higher. So at 6% at age 20, if you start then and earn 6%, you need $2,153 a month to get to a million dollars at 40. If you start at age 25 and can put away $3,421 a month at 6%, that would equal a million dollars at 40. If you start at age 30 and can put together $6,071 a month, and earn 6%, that would get to a million at age 40. And if you start at age 35, you'd have to put aside $14,261 a month to get to a million dollars at age 40. Now at 8%, it gets a little bit better. If you start at age 20, $1,686 a month at 8%. Or if you start at 25, $2,870 a month at 8%, gets you to a million dollars at 40. If you start at age 30, $5,429 a month at 8% would get you there. Or if you start at age 35, $13,519 a month would get you to $1 million at 8% by age 40. Now it gets better. At 10%, I'll show you how it's a little bit easier. If you start at age 20 and can earn 10% per year, it's $1,305 a month. If you start at age 25, it's $2,392 a month. If you start at age 30, it's $4,841 a month. And if you start at age 35, it's $12,806 a month. So here's the thing. As you can see, it gets a lot easier the more that you can get your money to work harder for you. And that's really the key, is you want to get your money working harder for you. It's not about how much you can save, because as you know, Saving your nest egg is step two of the six steps to wealth, but you've got to invest in a money engine and then step five, compound at a high rate. So it's really all about the rate at which you can compound at. It's not about how much you can save. It's not about saving in a straight line anyway, because as you're getting older, hopefully you're going to be making more money as you get older. I don't know about you, but I started out making a pittance in my 20s. I mean, I made so little that I couldn't even move out of my parents' house for a couple of years. But then once I hit 30 and certainly into my 40s, I was making six figures. So I ended up making a lot of money very quickly and increasing how my income was increased over the years. But it's not going to be a straight line. Most people aren't going to put aside the same amount of money each year. So this example, while I like the article and the, and the point of the article and the idea of the article, but it really is important to realize that you're not going to be saving in a straight line. It's going to be a curved line and you're going to save a lot more money as you get older. So the amount of savings each year should dramatically increase. Now, a lot of people talk about skimping their way to try to retire at age 40. And there's this trend to live in a house the size of a shed, forego owning a car and instead riding a bike and not to eat out or entertain or only to eat at happy hour or whatever. There's this real trend on this whole frugal thing to try to retire by 40. And that's not my style. It may not be your style either, or maybe it is. But you can retire early while still enjoying life and having creature comforts, but it means you have to invest well and compound at a high rate, somewhere between 8 to 
per year, I would say. And you probably have to make investing one of your hobbies, whether you're flipping houses on the side or investing in stocks or starting an online business, you're going to have to get to higher levels of compounding. But the good news is you can get to over 10%. You can make way over 10%, whether it's a business or real estate or investing in stocks, you can do much better than a 10% return. Can I guarantee that? No, but I can say it's very possible. Many people have done it. And so if other people have done it, perhaps you can do it too. So you have to go in pursuit of that. If that's in fact what you want is to retire by age 40, you need to go after those investments and you need to go after expertise in those investments so that you can do better. And you will want to have multiple asset classes. You're going to want to have diversification, have some stocks, have some real estate, have your own business, maybe even have some collectibles if that's your thing. Uh, Some people collect old cars or some people collect art and some people collect other things that have value, baseball cards, for example, that have value and that they become an expert in. So you have to get these things to be your hobby. You have to get making money to be something you enjoy so much. It's like a hobby for you so that it's fun because whatever you're having fun at, you're going to do well at and you're going to enjoy. So you want to get to the point where you're really enjoying one of these or more of these areas of creating wealth for yourself. And it's really all about the savings and compounding over a long period of time. So the higher the rate you can compound at, the sooner you're going to be wealthy. Of course, the most logical place to start is in your 401k because you're not taxed on that money. You can put it into a plan and it can grow without being taxed. Your employer might match some or all of it. Although nowadays it's very common that employers don't match any in your 401k, but that's okay too. It's still a good idea for you to invest in a 401k or an IRA or 403b, depending on where you work and what's available to you. But you want to max out your savings and your investments whenever possible. If you want to retire by age 40, you're going to have to be intensely focused and invest wisely. It's much harder to save your way to retirement than it is to invest your way to retirement. So you really want to get your money working harder for you and pick your asset classes, whether that's stocks, real estate, your own business, etc. Find out which one you're most interested in, which one you think you can do best in pursue that and see if you can't get to the higher compounding rates because when you can get your money working harder for you, that's going to get you to accomplish your goals faster. And I think it's a much better plan than just trying to save your way or frugal your way to wealth, which is much more difficult. Only a few people can really do that if they're perhaps in the tech industry or have a very high income as a professional and can sock away that money Yes, you can get to a million dollars by age 40, but again, you're probably going to need more than that to retire, and your best bet is to get adept at investing, get your money diversified, and try and get higher compounding rates as safely as possible. But, you know, over the long term in the stock market, an 8 to 10% average annual rate of return is pretty common. So, By getting into things like stock investments, getting into investing and getting your money invested to grow and create wealth for you, that is going to get you to your goal without having to save the straight line each year of these astronomical amounts that I read to you earlier in the podcast from this article. So I will post this article on my website at lindapjones.com podcast number 291. And you can read about how much money you have to save each month to retire at age 40. All those numbers that I gave you are in the article. And if you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button. And I'd also love to hear from you and have a review on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. And if we haven't connected on social media, come on over to Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Linda P. Jones or on Facebook at Linda P. Jones Fan Page. And I give more articles, 
more information about wealth building ideas, things that uh, are tips and thoughts and affirmations and all kinds of different things that I share with you on my different social media pages. So I'd love to connect with you there. And if you want to get your net worth moving in the right direction, get my 11 quick financial tips to boost your wealth. There are 11 quick things you can do to get your net worth growing faster. And I have to say, it's kind of funny, the microphone might have picked it up, but my little dog Penny is right next to me snoring. So if you've been hearing snoring in the background, I apologize. She's right here and it's pretty funny. If you haven't ever seen Penny, you can see her on my social media. She's a cute little pocket beagle, my little sweetie. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.